Hey guys, I just want to give you a quick little tutorial on Windows Phone 8 uh, with manipulation events. I was working on a project recently and uh, I came across um, having to use manipulation events to um, handle, I guess you could say, uh, some performance issues that I was having. Um, I wanted to know when the user was done manipulating something so I could kind of disable any uh, UI animations that it has, but uh, I'm sure you could find a million reasons of why you'd want to uh, work with manipulation events in Windows Phone. Um, let's just start uh, basically a brief overview of uh, what we're going to talk about here. Manipulation events and uh, I'm going to focus on three manipulation events for this uh, tutorial. Manipulation completed, started, and uh, delta. Um, the completed and started were the most important for me. Um, delta can be very important for knowing when someone is dragging something, um, they haven't let it go yet, and it's still moving. Uh, completed and started are, you know, kind of self-explanatory. Um, when you're done manipulating something, uh, and by something it has to be a UI element, um, these events can only be used on anything that uh, is derived from a UI element. Um, manipulation started is when they've uh, moved something. So, why don't we get into a little example and uh, see what we can do with this. So let's just start a new project. We're just going to create a Windows Phone app here. We're just going to call it uh, Manipulation 2. I created a project earlier just to make sure I ran through everything. So We're going to target Windows Phone 8 for this. Uh, I think Windows Phone 7.1 has uh, a lot of the similar um, features as Windows Phone 8 as far as manipulation events go, but there's some little uh, nuances that I'll talk about later that uh, kind of, you know, uh, surprised me. I wasn't uh, quite sure what was happening, and I had to dig a little deeper, and I found out. And I'll let you guys know uh, once we encounter that. So we can ignore most of this stuff for now. I think what we're going to do is, uh, just to be consistent, we'll... Uh, We'll give our application a name. We'll call it manipulation example. And we don't want to hit new space. Um, we're going to give the page name. We're going to leave this blank because I'm actually going to use this um, to show what our manipulations um, are doing at the time. So I use that as kind of a marker on uh, what's happening. And in our content panel, uh, for our manipulation event, our UI element that I would like to use for this demonstration would be the uh, the list box. So we're going to add a list box in here, and um, I think we're going to give it uh, some styling. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it LST data, and the item source is going to be binding and we're going to actually create a list in our uh, CS code that will bind to that later. For now we're just going to set this up. Um, I think for now we're just going to leave that and we'll see uh, once we're bound up if we're going to have to make any UI changes. I'm pretty sure we will considering I think the default font size is like 12 so it might be a little small. We're going to leave that there for now. Um, we're going to go in here. We're going to get rid of this stuff. We're not going to do any localization today. And for now, I think we're just going to create an observable collection. Of type string. Resolve this. There we go. And uh, to get some information in uh, our observable collection, I think we should uh, just do something simple like a for loop. Of course, this would probably be an actual data structure, probably an object or a list of objects, um, more so than strings. We're going to say 15 object or 15 strings. We're going to put in there. 
and uh, we're gonna do my data dot add item plus i. And of course we need to set the data context of our list box that we had out there and we called it LST data. And this just says, uh, hey, this is um, where I'm getting my data if I'm binding my elements. So um, we have this set up. Uh, let's just see if uh, this is going to work. Just give it a quick run. All right. So we actually have some stuff bound up there. This is a little small for what we need. I'm going to quickly give it a quick style so we can actually uh, do some manipulation on that and actually see stuff uh, kind of move. I'm going to stop this. We're going to go back to the XAML here. And I think we're going to give this a items template. Item template. There we go. And in here we're going to give it a data template. And um, I give everything a stack panel just because I know I'm going to add stuff to it later and I like it to be nice and structured. We're going to do text block. Um, text is going to be bound to our data context that's coming in. So, and here is where we're going to set the, uh, the font size to make it a little bigger. So, font size, let's, uh, let's set it to 41. We'll make it nice and nice and big. And now let's take a quick look and see if we're ready to, there we go. That looks much better. So we can move it up and down and it actually goes off screen. So let's actually get into what uh, we want to do here. So like I said earlier, manipulation events are very useful for many UI elements, not just a list box. Um, my particular example was a list box bound to uh, some shapes and I wanted to know when the user was actually moving those shapes because uh, off screen I had some uh, storyboards uh, animating a bunch of things and I didn't want to have that uh, going on when when the user wasn't actually looking at it I think that's a waste of resources so what I wanted to do was I wanted to uh, detect when the user was manipulating it it being the list box for me and uh, set a timer that would say hey um, once they're done manipulating this uh, or if they are manipulating it at the time why don't we stop those animations right now so we can kind of save the CPU a little bit um, but I did notice that there were some interesting things with Windows Phone 8 that uh, I'd like you guys to know a uh, little search on the internet would probably get this answer but it's not uh, apparent at all at first uh, kind of makes you think you know what happened to my application uh, why isn't why isn't this manipulation event working why isn't this event handler firing and so I'll talk about that and I'll show you what happens. So for all of these events, I'm going to actually do them in code. Um, you can do them right in the XAML, um, right on the list box itself. So we can just add a uh, manipulation completed or a manipulation delta or manipulation started events right here. And they will uh, link back right into our event handler that uh, we make in here. And it'll actually make it for you if you right click on it and navigate to event handler. So that's nice. But for, for now, we're just going to do it right in here. Um, we're going to do a manipulation started. And we're just going to start that. Um, and then we're going to do a manipulation completed. And then we're going to do a manipulation delta. Okay, so we have our event handlers here for all three manipulation events that we want to take care of. Um, let's go back into our XAML here. Sorry for jumping around. We're going to give this a name because we're actually going to use this, like I said earlier. Um, we're going to use it to display what's happening actively with the manipulation. So um, I think we should probably call it a page name. That's nice. Okay, so so when the manipulation delta happens, this is when we are actually moving our UI element. So we're going to set the text to be moving. And 
And yes, that's going to update um, many, many, many times, but uh, that's okay. For now, we don't mind. And for the manipulation completed event, uh, we're going to set the page name text to, you guessed it, completed. And manipulation started. We will probably barely see this if we do, but I think you'll notice it. All right, so we set that to start it. Now, this is pretty simple, right? I mean, uh, we have our list. We have our list box. It's bound to some data, so we actually have some stuff inside of it that we can manipulate by scrolling up and down and selecting. Uh, selecting would be uh, a gesture or a tap or something like that. Uh, we just want to. We're just worried about manipulation. And so, if we run this, uh, let's see what happens. So we got our started. But we don't have our delta, and we don't have our complete. So what happened here? What's happening? This is a question that I asked myself. I was like, well, that's strange. How come uh, none of this is happening? Well, it turns out that these events are not, uh, they're actually handled by default uh, by Windows to not actually fire. Um, this is done for performance reasons. And I didn't read into it too much as to what would cause, you know, a huge performance loss on this. I mean, obviously, you could probably use this in the wrong way and uh, cause a major performance hit by firing a lot of events, you know, with uh, a bunch of images or something like that, or use it to uh, transform or manipulate images when probably there's some better, better ways to do that. But we want to use this for various reasons and uh, let's figure out how we can get our delta and our completed uh, to actually work. So what happens is in order for these to work you kinda of have to override the the fact that uh, Windows Phone is handling these events on its own. We want to handle it ourselves so what we're gonna do is we are going to use the handy add handler method here and then what we're gonna do is we are going to give it a routed event and for this um, we're gonna give it a UI element and then we're gonna find what event it was um, this is gonna be the completed event so we're gonna say completed and then we're gonna give it a handler so we're gonna do new event handler and for this we are going to Actually, we're going to specify the type um, strongly. We have to say that it is a manipulation completed event. And we might have to resolve that. And oh, this is going to be the same thing as this right here. So we can just copy this. It's going to be an argument. And for this, we are going to specify our get complete it first, and then we're going to specify our um, actual event method that we're going to use. And since we already have it right here, we're just going to paste that in there. And lastly, um, we are going to handle this event ourselves. So true to register the handler such that it is invoked, even when the routed event is marked handled on its event data. So like I said before, Microsoft was taking care of it um, themselves because they didn't necessarily want this to be used without people knowing that it could affect performance. So we're going to say yes, we want to handle this ourselves. Let's resolve this. There's UI input. Oh, maybe I resolved it's the wrong one. system input there we go all right so let's see if this works remember our Delta still doesn't work but at least we should see it completed oh there we go there we go so we have started and completed just like we wanted it to so let's get our Delta working same principle as, as before we can actually Pretty much copy this. We're going to paste it there, and we're going to paste our event arguments. And 
we need to make sure that we're pointing to the right event method. So, there we go. Now this should work just fine now. Uh oh, we have a problem. Unhandled exception, target invocation. So let's see what happened here. Something always happens when we're doing it live. So let's stop. Manipulation Delta Event. You know what? I wonder if this one. Oh, well, there's our problem right there. That was fine. We still said it was a completed event. Not a good idea. So, now let's see if it works. Yep. Yeah. And we're moving. There we go. And then we let go. Completed. Started. Brief second there. But now because we have the delta, we're not really going to see that very long. And there we have it. So now we can actually handle all of these events. And um, it uh, wasn't evident at first that uh, those were actually handled by Microsoft. So I hope this tutorial actually helps someone. Um, it took me a little bit. At first I thought I might have uh, wired it wrong or maybe... Um, crossed some things because I had it on separate threads that weren't UI so I thought you know maybe maybe I need a dispatcher but uh, that wasn't the case and uh, you just need to add your own handler and everything seems to work out just fine so hope this tutorial helped and uh, this source code I can make available it's it's pretty simple you guys can take a look at it and uh, do you know whatever you want anyway I'll be making some more tutorials on uh, various aspects of Windows Phone 8 and just anything else I come across personally that I think uh, maybe someone else would uh, like to know this. Thanks.